Hello everyone, this is Ronnie and I talk about my raw food diet on this channel and I'm going to be talking about losing weight, my own experiences, but my recent experience in, in general losing weight on a raw food diet. So if that topic is of interest to you, then that's what I'm going to be talking about and I'll be talking about my own recent experiences, some of the questions that people maybe bring up about losing weight and how that works and, and why people struggle with it and how you can do it and all that kind of stuff and how raw food helps with that. So I'm going to I'm going to go into a number of those topics so if you like that then hopefully you might get something out of this video. And if you're looking to maybe share this information or teach it to other people you might get something out of this video as well if you're looking to help people or coach people about health related issues. I um would say firstly to start off with, I, I never really had a weight issue growing up as a as a child, though I do remember looking at myself in the mirror and thinking I was a little bit tubby or something. And I think I may, that maybe started me exercising and stuff. And, and really, as you go through growing up, the puberty phase and you're growing, often you lose weight anyway because you're, you get, you're growing and the energy's going into that. But into my teens, into my early 20s, I was always a fairly slim weight most of the time. Never quite a six pack, but um, not too bad. There was a time in my life I really, I did want a six pack. I never achieved it, but I, I anyway, I thought that was when I was younger. I did, I did try and do that at one point. Um, but I was fairly slim and I didn't really have to do anything. I was quite active. I did like sports, but I'd basically been brought up to eat a fairly moderate amount of food. I think that's basically the, the advantage I had. Not that I didn't have an appetite or that the food, the diet I was eating was particularly good, but we were never overfed as children. That doesn't mean that we were starved. We always had food to eat, but it was probably a moderate amount compared to what some people eat, you know, compared to what I saw when I had an exchange student situation from America and I went over to his house and I saw how they ate in that house and I couldn't finish the portion sizes that I was given and I was given a sandwich and this is the first time and they do this in America where there's a sandwich that is the mostly the meat it is meat and you know some bread rather than it being more of like a an equal distribution of bread and meat it's way too much meat for a meat lover to enjoy you know so at the time I didn't enjoy the sandwich I was too much meat and um and as you go vegan you start to realize you never really liked the meat that much anyway it was it was always it was always the other stuff but Regardless, the por some people's portion sizes are really big. So we had re kind of a better probably portion size. And I always kind of had that thing of like I could eat basically as much as I wanted and never really gained weight. Uh, I, I, at least that's what I think in my head. I probably didn't really eat as much as, much as I wanted. I probably did hold back a little bit. But anyway, when I went raw foods, when I got into the raw foods thing, I had been through a period of time where I'd went vegetarian, I'd went vegan, I'd cut out other stuff from my diet previous and I'd seen my weight change but I'd never really weighed myself. So I don't know what I was when I was 16 years old or 18. I really don't have any memory of weighing myself or knowing what my weight was. I was probably going more by the look. That was probably more what I was interested in. And I never really had a reason to weigh myself or know what I weighed. I, I must have done it though. I must have done it. I just can't remember what the number was. So it was probably very irregular that I did it. When I got into the raw foods diet, it wasn't for weight loss issues. It wasn't for weight loss for me. It wasn't really something I was thinking about. It wasn't, it, it was, there was a part of me that was interested to see if you ate raw foods, would you, would you develop more muscle naturally in the way that chimpanzees and other apes have are stronger than us 
and I was intrigued by that, I'd say that's probably not true, that thing of that you could develop muscle without doing anything if you just go raw. I wouldn't say that's right. And I think we've got plenty of examples to say that there's plenty of people that have been raw that are particularly muscly, right? So not to say that you can't develop strength and muscle, but not without doing some exercise along with it. But one of the first videos I was influenced by was J uh, Tim Van Orden, who kind of suggested that he could put <laughs> that you put on muscle without without doing anything for that and that intrigued me so but it turns out that I, I would I would not make that promise to you it, maybe it could happen to some people but not myself anyhow uh, so I wasn't looking to lose weight when I went raw for a year I did lose weight my first year of being a hundred percent raw I lost weight. And why did I lose weight? Is that because raw foods? Was that because of something in the nature of raw foods? And it really wasn't ever that. It was purely that I was consuming less calories. So I was trying to eat as much as I wanted. But I just, I couldn't, you know. I, mean, I was influenced by 30 bananas a day. And I I never ate 30 bananas a day. It was too many. It was just too many. If I got to like 22, 23, 24, that was, I was getting to a cutoff point, a kind of a natural cutoff point. And I didn't have nuts and seeds and avocados and a big massive fatty salad or whatever. So I I lost weight, even though I was, you know, in, in to some degree eating as much as I wanted. I, was, I still lost weight in that period of time. And I probably got down to my slimmest that I ever was, which was about 143 pounds. And I'm um, 5 foot 11, 0. 0.5, if you want to add on the, if you want to make it accurate, 5, 11.5, or I was then, maybe it's changed, but 5, 11.5, um, not 6 foot, but 5, 11.5, and... That's that's still not dangerously underweight for five eleven point five. I don't think, but I did. I I didn't really have any muscle at all. You know, I didn't have a six pack, and and that was my slimmest I think I've ever been really, apart from maybe at school or something. So that's where I was at then, and. Over the years, my diet changed and I started to add more nuts and seeds. Not, not as a great plan, just something that kind of happened. And I put on weight when I added on added more nuts and seeds. Wasn't tracking it, so I don't really know, but I definitely was putting on weight because you just feel it. You feel yourself change. And gradually, I, did, I added tahini to my diet at one point. At one point, I was doing frozen peas and tahini as a salad. On de de defrosted frozen peas and, and defrosted sweet corn and tahini and sauce and and I definitely put on some weight doing that and and of, and over time as well you develop the ability to eat more fruit like at the same time your appetite for eating fruit goes up not at first and I try and tell people like this if you go hundred percent raw you can eat as much fruit as you like you're not going to put on weight but a lot of people. Who are concerned about putting on weight they will they always think they will and they're always kind of like you don't know me i always eat too much i always binge it's like it's you're not going to binge on blueberries you're not going to binge on blackberries and plums and apples and bananas you're not you can maybe binge on dried fruit but if you're talking about 100% raw and no, even dry fruit, it's quite difficult for a beginner because they're not used to that level of sugar in their diet. Quite frankly, they're not, they're not used to that feeling. Like that's a lot of sugar. And eating beyond that, most people eat a few pieces of fruit and they say, oh, that's enough. Because they don't realize they've not got to the point of eating more than that, of really eating enough. And it's... One of the lessons from Doug Graham, one of the lessons from 80-10-10, potentially some of the 
hygiene people before Doug were talking about that, maybe TC Fry and so on. But in the raw food world, in general, Doug was one of the few voices that was really saying that. Now it's a very common thing. Now that information's out there, it wasn't in the past. So people would eat a little bit of fruit and like, that's enough fruit. I'm going to have loads of nuts now, right? <laughs> Which isn't a great thing. But anyway, uh, that's, that's what we people are. So I learned to eat more fruit and I learned to add all this fat into my diet. I didn't learn, I just was doing it. And I was kind of operating on a rule of, well, if it's raw, if it's kind of raw, you know, I'm not sure, defrosted peas, defrosted corn. If that's really raw, tahini, is it really raw? You know, but all these things creeped into my diet at a time and I put on weight. And I had a major time of eating a lot of pistachios, major pistachio period of my of my life <laughs> uh, where I was eating a concerning amount of pistachios. And I uh, haven't done that in a while. I do still love them. They're my definitely my favourite nut, but I don't, I've not been eating them in a long time. So anyway, um, so I've not had any nuts in, in quite a while. So anyway, um, to, to be to be open. And then there was a period of time when I ate cooked food again. In the 12, 11, 12 years that I've been raw, for about six months, six to eight months, I would say, I ate cooked food, vegan, and a lot of junk and all sorts of stuff. And... Gained a lot of weight in that time as well. Because when you've been raw and you've developed an ability to eat a volume of food and then you go back to eating cooked food, you still have this ability to eat a volume of food. <laughs> and it, it is too much. So I put on weight. And I was also doing sedentary jobs at that point. I was sitting around a lot. So I wasn't being very active. That was another aspect to it. But I put on weight. And I was actually in denial about it for a long time. I was kind of in denial about it. And eventually, because you can sometimes, sometimes you eat a lot of fruit, you have a, a big fruit belly. So you can say, oh, it's just a fruit belly or whatever. And it wasn't. <laughs> it was starting to be an actual belly. And a guy that I trained with in Aikido, he said, so how come you're vegetarian? I thought you were a vegetarian, but you're still, but you've got a belly. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> and, um, and I thought, Okay, uh, this is I need to do something about I've, I'm, I need to do something about this, and uh, I'm trying to think of something else I was going to say. Yeah, I put on, I put on. Yeah, and there was another point. Yeah, and there was my thighs rubbing together. My thighs rubbing together was a bad sign. And then there's this bit under here that kind of rubs together when you put on weight. Another thing when you start to put on weight is you you start to walk in a different way because you're like trying to rebalance. <laughs> you're trying to rebalance the weight, and you you start to spread out, and, and your hips or something start to spread out, and you start to like waddle about a little bit. So I I put on enough weight that that was happening. Like that's too much. I don't know about you, but there's a that's my point at least that that's my point is lower than that now. But at that point, that was definitely a point of I need to stop this. So my first idea was, well, if I go back to raw, because I think I was still eating cooked food at the time, if I go back to raw, I'll lose the weight. I'll go right back down to whatever weight I was. So I went back to raw, and I lost some weight. In fact, when you cut out salt from your diet and all that, you lose quite a lot of washer weight quite quickly. Some people have suggested if you want to win a contest and you're a salt eater, a weight loss contest, then just give up salt for a week and you will, um, you'll win the contest because people can lose like 10 pounds of water in a week when they cut out salt. So I cut out some weight when I just went back to raw, but, and I kind of thought if I just, if you can eat as much as you like raw and you, and you won't get fat. That's why I was kind of still under that thing. And to some degree it was true, but I was still overweight and I was still too overweight. I wasn't obese maybe or anything like that. Well, I wasn't obese, but I was still more overweight than I wanted to be and it wasn't looking good. And 
in all those years as well, I was doing this fruit festival and some of the stress of all that impacted me in a, in a way that some of those things were, I think that had an impact to some degree. I, I, I wasn't focusing as, as much as I could do on my own physical appearance or health or whatever. So I was staying raw most of the time, apart from that six, eight month period. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I was staying raw most of that time. Uh, but I, but I wasn't, I didn't automatically lose all the weight. So I'd put, I'd taken off some of the weight. And then I thought, well, if I go back to 80, 10, 10, I'll lose all the weight. And I went back to 80, 10, 10, so no nuts and seeds, cut out all the fat, all the overt fats out. And I still only got down to a certain point. I, I It cut down a little, but not a lot, not a huge amount. And I thought I would just be stripping down to nothing, you know. And uh, that wasn't happening. And... If you, if you say, well, what was your diet? Well, I was having, you know, I'd have banana smoothies. I'd have um, juice from a bottle. I'd have, probably didn't have dried fruit at that point so much. But maybe a little, I'm not sure. Um, my salad was tomatoes, lettuce, lots of tomatoes and lettuce and stuff like that. Even then, it was like quite simple. Never a, never a high fat dressing, cut, cut out avocados and all that stuff. And still, still was overweight. I was still overweight. And um, didn't really think about it that much and wasn't too, too bothered about it and stuff. And, and as a man, you don't really get... It depends. It's hard to say, but you... I don't know. It's hard to know if it matters. How much does it matter? You get older, you get balder, you get grey... You get fat <laughs> or whatever. How much does it matter? You'll still find, you know, you'll still, you still have, you'll still have women that will be attracted to you. You know, I'm not saying that's a reason to be overweight, or but I'm just saying, you, you. It's not like you get a lot of. It's not like if now that I, if I lose some weight, well, all these women are going to be interested in me. That's, it, it doesn't have that much of an effect, right? It doesn't have that much of an impact. So there's some there's a point of like, how much does it matter? Um, it's, it's not going to make, it's not going to make a big difference in how women look at you. A lot of them say stuff like, I don't even notice that. It's probably not true, but women say a lot of kind things, whatever. Um, and uh, it's not, helping you in your business in your career that much or whatever you're not going to lose weight and all of a sudden be better at talking to people or whatever so it's kind of like is it is it the biggest thing to focus on so I wasn't focusing on it and then I had a situation where I was with I'm really going into a lot of detail here with this hopefully you're enjoying the story or whatever and then I got into a relationship with a raw vegan a fruitarian sort of uh, and I could see that she kind of wanted to lose weight and she had a bit of a uh, she was, it was a bit concerning some of her behavior and how she wanted to lose weight and I thought to myself well Maybe I should lose some weight. And she kind of mentioned my weight a few times. So I thought, well, maybe I should lose some weight and actually do this and focus on it. Because I just hadn't focused on it. It was something I was like, oh, my weight will come off when I go raw. It'll come off when I go 80, 10, 10. And then I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll just do fruit and all, you know, and, and all that. But I was still trying to kind of, I was still happy to sort of eat as much as I wanted. I thought I could eat as much as I wanted, like I had in the beginning, and I would lose the weight. That wasn't working anymore. Because I'd learned how to eat enough and more. In fact, I'd probably trained myself to eat more than I needed. Because I was so overly concerned about the whole message of don't under eat on this diet. You know, if you under eat, you're going to fail. You're going to go back to eating cooked food and all that stuff. So I was thinking more in that pattern. And I was thinking, 
I was just eating as much as I wanted and thinking, well, I'll, I'll lose weight when I do that. And that, that wasn't happening. So I start, so I kind of researched it a little bit. Like, well, how do you actually lose weight? And then I actually, you know, did the calorie calculator. How many calories do I actually need? And looked at that. And, and I realized the amount of calories I needed to be a healthy body weight was a lot less than I thought. You know, for me, it was more in the range of 2,200, 2,300, 2,400, maybe, depending on my activity level. But my activity wasn't very high, so it was probably closer to 2,200. And I'm eating like 2,800, 3,000 calories a day, probably, on many days, 2,500 at least, consistently. And, and maybe more than 3,000 some days, to be honest. And uh, and so I was looking into the science of just not the science of weight loss, but the basic ideas around weight loss. And it was like, eat five hundred calories less a day than you need. And that was the typical diet advice of how to lose weight. So I made a bit of a plan for myself, and I'd figured out my calories and all that, which is what you should do, by the way. Figure out how many calories do you need to maintain your body weight currently? And how many do you need to be a healthy body weight? It's probably not that much different. It's probably not that much different. You'd be surprised because people gain weight over time. They gain a hundred pounds over a course of 10, 20 years, just because they eat a little bit more than they need every day. So I figured out where I was at and then I cut off 500 calories and I kind of came up with a plan I used chronom chronometer and I and, and this is someone that had at least eight years of experience with the raw food diet by that point so there's people that have no experience with this that I talk to about these things sometimes coaching or whatever and they think they don't have to do any of this stuff and none of this applies to them and they're going to figure it out their own way whereas I had loads of experience with the raw food diet but I was still in this mindset of like, you can eat as much as you like raw, as long as it's low fat, as long as it's 80, 10, 10, as long as it's no overt fats. So that's where I was in my head. Um, and I'll get back to that maybe. Maybe we'll make two videos, kind of a long topic. Some people have said they like my long videos, so I'll, I'll keep it long for, for this one. Um... What are we getting to? Raw foods, uh, losing weight, the chronometer. Yeah, so I was using the chronometer. I was in my flat, you know, just kind of figuring this out. And, and I thought, man, I'm going to feel terrible if I under eat by 500 calories a day. That's going to be really bad. Because I also thought that will be like really, really bad. For a few days it is. And probably I tried, maybe I tried a bunch of times and failed at it. I can't remember. Probably did. So eventually I got going with it. And after two or three days, you know, you don't feel that great. 500 calories less than, than you need. That's quite, I think that's, now, now I think it's quite extreme actually to be at that level. You feel a bit cold at first. It, it doesn't feel good. To be quite clear, losing weight doesn't really feel good doesn't feel good and I've seen boxer I, I saw a UFC MMA fighter talk about that he's like the whole time you're cutting weight you don't feel good and that's and they, they cut weight more extreme but I think that's probably true of of everyone that cuts that's losing weight you know you're not at your best you don't feel at your best it's one of the sacrifices of doing it for a period of time you're not quite but this is the thing about it. The more you try, the more quickly you try to lose weight, the worse you'll feel. The less you try and cut weight, you'll feel better. And that probably makes more sense to most people. But a lot of people want the quick result. A lot of people, which is kind of like another way of saying most people fail at most things. Most people fail at most things because they want a quick result. And it's impossible. Most things that have 
any value to us, it's, it's impossible to find a quick result most of the time for most things. And it's one of those pieces of wisdom of life. Most things you have to approach it in a long, as a long-term plan, a long-term thing. And if you do, it'll, everything will go in your favour. Because if you just cut back a little bit every day for two, three years, you'll lose all the weight you need to. Most people will lose all the weight they need to lose. Most people. And the amount of people I've known who I met 10 years ago, all they needed to do was cut back a little bit. But they all tried fasting. They all tried juicing. They all tried a 90-day cleanse. They all tried a 30-day cleanse. They all just tried fruit only. They all tried raw. It's like you didn't really need to do any. If your goal was weight loss, cut back on what you eat a little bit over time and I want to say that you might say at this point by the way well Ronnie what, calories what, what are you talking about calories for this is raw foods this is calories don't apply that's that's scientific information from a lab it doesn't make any sense here's the one thing I'll say to you if you start tracking your weight using chronometer tracking what you eat you'll be amazed at how accurate calories in calories out is and the, all the people that say it doesn't work are people that aren't tracking. There's a thing called responsibility, accountability. A lot of people on planet Earth don't want that. And so it's easier to say it's someone else's fault. And um, it's just, it's, this is a scientific scam. And, uh, <laughs> and it was someone else, it's uh, whatever. It doesn't apply to them and all that stuff. This is one of the laws of, thermodynamics of the of the of the universe you know my thyroid my hormones maybe that makes you overeat i don't know maybe i don't i'm not even sure about that but it's still calories in calories out it's still calories in calories out regardless it all, it all comes back to that a calorie is a unit of, of heat energy it is uh, we've learned to break down food and figure out how much how much energy is in it and it's amazing how accurate it is it's amazing how the science on this in terms of how to figure out how many calories you need and tracking the calories in food and then like even like with chronometer like you weigh a food and then you look at what it says in chronometers this is almost exactly the same what chronometer says if i you know it's it's a, it's it's so good so it's in your favor to do this stuff so um yeah it's and, and it's almost like so predictable that you can look at it and go well i was i pretty much did consistently 500 calories less a week that week so i should lose a pound and it almost always well it basically always happens and it's so accurate. And then you don't have such a good week and you lose less. And it's like, it just it's just so perfectly accurate, basically all the time. So I would suggest that you start believing in calories in, calories out, because it is what it is. And they've put enough animals in cages and stuff to figure this out absolutely to be true. Like, there's no question about this. It's not like, oh, it doesn't apply to me doesn't apply to raw food. Like it's been st what do you think they gave the animals? Yes, it applies to raw food. It's carbohydrates, protein, and, nit and um, fat. It, you know, we turn it, it it's carbon-based stuff. So anyway, anyway, that was that was an amazing revelation of how and, and after a few days I got kind of used to it. I think I was sticking quite closely to 500 calories. As you lose weight over time, and it's quite nice that the, I was tracking it, and it becomes motivating. As you do it, you, you and it actually works, and you go down, and then you notice the difference, and then you start, that becomes motivating. It's a motivating sort of crescendo, which is a good thing. Then I went off to Thailand, and I didn't have my weight thing to weigh stuff, and sometimes we were eating in raw food restaurants and all this stuff, and it was like I couldn't quite track what I was doing. And my girlfriend at the time, she said, why don't we do mangoes for three days? And I thought, hmm, 
never really wanted to do a fruit mono island, but yeah, why not? Okay, I don't really want to do it, but I'll do it. So I did the mono fruit island and it occurred to me, this will be a good way of me tracking what I eat because I can eat the same thing every day. I'll know exactly what I've eaten, basically. And the mangoes are the best thing anyway. So I just continued to eat mangoes. And, um, and I did that for nearly four months, eating mangoes. People thought that's fascinating, that's amazing. That's really interesting. And it was, I just enjoyed it so much. I didn't do it out of any kind of, you know, I don't know, any weird beliefs or any cleansing or nothing. There was no no cleansing that went on. You know, I, I'm already cleansed or whatever. There was no mucoid plaque that came out or what have you. I didn't levitate or anything. There was no spiritual experience. I life became more interesting to me because I was no longer looking to food for stimulation, even though the mangoes were fantastic, but I wasn't looking for stimulation in the food. So it was great. There was a, there was a lot of learning from it. I actually wrote a book, kind of, when I was doing that. Um, so I, I lost weight doing all that. And I got down to 10 stone. about So I lost like 50 pounds. And that whole experience of going from my highest weight to my lowest, I'd lost 50 pounds. Which is a lot of weight to lose. A lot of weight to lose. And in my mind, if you pick up 50 pounds and you think you're carrying that around all the time, it's, it's a lot. So, it's the, and, and something I also learned, there's no benefit in being overweight. There is no benefit. There's no benefit in being overweight. You're, and so many things improve as, as you lose weight. So many things. Small things, maybe, but a lot of things improve. I, it's hard to explain, I would say, but you notice things improving. It's hard to explain, but... Just your desire sometimes, even to do things or, or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know. There's many factors involved there. But... <laughs> um, so, yeah, I lost weight. And, and gradually over the years, I've, I've stuck with raw, but I have put weight, I put weight back on. And it was kind of gradual. Um, but I track my weight ever since. I track my weight basically every week ever since. And I could see it going up and going up. And, um, and I would go back to like uh, no overts and all that. And then it would kind of stall but it wouldn't necessarily lose. So I got to a point this time around where I was like, all right, I, I want to lose some weight again. And what I've planned on, my plan is not just to lose the weight and then kind of forget about it, but to lose the weight and then sustain a particular level of calories. Because I want to see if I can get back to a point where I feel like I'm eating as much as I want and I don't put on weight. Now, I don't know if that's possible to get back to that, <laughs> but I kind of want to train myself to eat the right, um, roughly the right amount so that I don't have to think about it anymore is basically the way I, I look at it. But um, I, I've been losing weight again. I've lost kind of 10 to 12 pounds in the last 12 weeks or something like that. In the last 10 weeks, something like that. And... Um, it is a bit hard. It's a, a, none of this stuff is a is a is a party, you know. I think if people want that, it's not realistic. You gotta go into these things realizing there's there's work to it and embrace that. Realize this is the reason why everyone fails at it. You're not gonna be the one that figures it out in an easy way. And it's just the the way of it. This is just how it works. And it's calories in, calories out. It's tracking what you eat. It's eating a little bit less. You maybe don't need to track if you know what it feels like to not eat enough and you can stick to that. But the temptation to eat that a little bit more is going to be big. You're going to have to eat less than you want to eat. That is how it works. That's how it feels. The advantage as a raw foodist is you don't feel hunger in the same way other people do. You still have a desire to eat, but you don't feel hunger pains in the way that some people do. For some reason, people, people never um, 
seem to understand me on this, but when I say hunger pains, people are like, what do you mean? Like, it's, it's painful to be hungry. It's a pain. That's why you eat. And a lot of people don't get that. But that's what hunger is. It's a painful feeling. And on cooked food, that is a dramatically bigger feeling. And also cooked food's addictive and it's easy, easy to overeat. So it's, it's, it's easy on raw. Most people, if they just add raw food to their diet, will start to lose weight. The most people. Most people do fruit for breakfast will start to lose some weight. Maybe not 10 pounds in a week, but over time they'll probably lose weight if they stick with fruit for breakfast. A lot of people just going vegan, lose weight, just going raw, lose weight. Um, going vegetarian even, a lot of people lose weight doing that. It's a reason that people stop doing those diets because they don't put, they, they're under eating and they don't realise they are under eating. It's a big reason why people stop doing those diets. They say, I felt weak, I felt tired, I felt like I was missing something. That's what you feel like when you're not eating enough food. So you have to get into the mindset of realising you're going against what your body wants, you're going against your desire, you can't really use intuition. Um, intuition comes from experience. If you don't have the experience, you don't have intuition, as far as I can tell. There's no like innate bodily intuition about diet. It comes from experience. So it's another learning journey for me. Um, and I've known how to do the raw food diet. I've mastered how to do the raw food diet. I know how to get, stop eating cooked food and stop eating addictive foods and all that stuff. I know how to do all that stuff. I've mastered all that stuff, but I still ate too much of a raw food diet on a raw diet. And um, as, soon as, you do, as soon as you say some of these things, people will go, like someone this morning I was talking to, and they went, uh, what was in your diet? And I was like, well, with smoothies and stuff and juice and stuff. Oh, was it pasteurized juice? Yeah, yeah. Some of it was pasteurized juice, I don't know. Oh, yeah, if you have pasteurized juice, you can put on weight. It's like, <laughs> what difference does it make? I can eat, I can drink three, th you know, I can, I can, I can eat 3,000 calories of grapes in a day. I have no problem in doing that. Um, I, I, I can eat. There's a lot of kind of baby, baby vegans, baby raw vegans and stuff, baby raw vegans. I can eat more than most of you guys. I can eat more than big guys. I can eat more than you all. So those of us that have done this long enough, we can out eat you if you're in your first six months or a year or 18 months of doing this. Never mind 3,000 calories. I can eat 4,000 calories of, of grapes or whatever. Of most fruits. Um, and so if when people go, well, if you eat raw, if you eat fruit, you don't put on weight, you can't put on weight. Of course you can put on weight. Not beginners, not people new to this, not people coming from a standard diet, but me doing this for 11, 10, 11, 12 years, I can, <laughs> I can, others can, some, some, some don't or can't, some can eat as much as they like, but some are higher activity level and so on and so forth. But there'll still be calories in, calories out situation. You know, and some people as well, when it comes to this overeating, undereating thing, some people, it's like they can eat as much as they like in one day. They don't do that every day. In their mind, they think they do, but they really don't. You get people that say things like, um, no, I eat as much as I like. When did you have your first meal today? Ah, uh, 3 p.m. Like, how is that eating as much as you like? You didn't want to eat anything up till 3 p.m.? But some people are like that because they ate so much the day before that they don't eat, they don't eat, that they kind of balance it out the next few days and they maintain their weight at a particular level. So, um, anyway, that's my journey. I'm losing a little bit of weight and it's relatively, it's, it's kind of difficult and easy. Depends how you want to look at it. Certainly, most people, if you go wrong, a lot of people, by the way, 
they say they want to go raw. They really mean they want to lose weight. There's an awful lot of people in that category. I'm starting to understand that that's what people are saying. I need to start interpreting that. So when people say, I want to get more energy, they mean they want to, <laughs> they mean they want to lose weight, <laughs> right? With coaching, a lot of people have come to you for coaching for various reasons. And none of them, have, very few of them have ever said, because I want to lose weight. Uh, and some of them have really said, you know, the weight thing's not that important to me. And I think part of it is they don't want, it's like weight, weight is the bogeyman for them. And they don't want to say, I want to get away from the bogeyman because then the bogeyman might appear, sort of a thing. The boogeyman, bogeyman, I, I, I never use that word, but it just came into my head. In, in Europe, in Western Europe, the word for bear is bear, or in German, it's something close to that in French. But in Eastern Europe, it's Arsis or Arctis or Arctis or something like that. And the word Arctic means bears. There are bears here. And Antarctic means there's no bears here, right? Arctic, Arctic, whatever, Ar Ursus. The thing in the sky, the bears, called Ursa, Ursa Minor, or whatever. So it's all that kind of language. In Western Europe, we don't say that. And we use this phrase brown. Let me just see, I've got. We use this word bear, which really means brown. The brown one or brown thing or something like that. And some people think, some linguists believe that people were so scared of saying the word bear, the original word, because it might appear that they started to not say the word and it fell out of use. Like, don't don't even talk about it. We don't want to summon the bear into our life. You know, we don't we don't want to bring on the bear. So let's just not talk about it. I don't know if that's the best way. You know, I'm not sure if that's how you stop a bear coming into your life. Just don't talk about them. I don't know. Reticulated activating system is a, is a thing that makes us, if you talk about something more, you start to see it more. But that's because your attention finds it more. Because you, and your, your brain's starting to believe it's more important to you or whatever. So it starts to find it more. Like if you get a red car, you start to see red cars everywhere. You never saw red cars before, but all of a sudden you're seeing red cars. And um, it's called the reticular act activating system. And, and maybe in the past, you started to see bears more because you were talking about it. And, they <laughs> and we started to believe we were like summon them, sum summoning them into our life. But um, so anyway, uh, that's why sometimes people don't want to talk about they don't want to talk about losing weight. They don't want to talk about being fat or whatever. They don't want to talk about weight loss. No, I'm not even trying to lose weight. Don't, don't talk about that because then it won't happen, right? Uh, I think you should focus on it. You should focus on it, at least in the right way, and put more of a focus on it. And a lot of people fail at losing weight because they didn't put enough focus on it. It is important. It's a tremendously important aspect of your well-being, not just your health. Is a tremendously important part of your well-being. There is health and there is well-being. Being at the correct weight is a big part of being healthy. But it's also a big part of well-being. Which I would say is your general day-to-day -day enjoyment of how you feel. Your general day-to-day -day vibes. People, A lot of people have really great day-to-day -day feeling. But they're not particularly healthy, right? Um, they're kind of positive attitude people and they, you know, they kind of feel good or maybe they do things that make them feel good or exercise a lot or take certain substances that make them feel good to some degree, but they're not really healthy underneath it all. Um, so health and well-being, but weight definitely affects your well-being. And that's another, maybe I'll make a video about that, but it's an important thing. You should focus on it. You should do it right. You need to embrace what it is. You need to stop thinking it's someone else's fault, genetics, you know, something. It's something else out there. It's, it's farmers putting something in the food. It's the food companies putting chemicals in the food. It's this and that. Well, don't eat that stuff then, right? 
uh, or I don't exercise enough is the other thing. I'm just not exercising enough. It's not the food. I don't exercise enough. No, it's the food. It's definitely the food. Anyway, so that's my video for the day. And uh, the top, you know, in summary, a raw food diet will generally, raw foods, more raw foods in your diet, most people will generally, everyone will generally lose weight if they go towards more raw foods in their diet. Um, but to learn to do a raw food diet 100%, you need to learn to eat enough food, which you can do on, with raw foods. If you then eat more than that, you'll put on weight. That's pretty much how it'll work. And, um, and I didn't quite believe that. But that seems to be the case for me. At least I don't lose weight. And I, I, I've seen myself gain weight without eating overt fats. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. So you eat more calories than you need. You add you you start to add on weight as long as you do it consistently. I didn't think that was the case before. I really didn't believe that until I've done it with myself. So you know, but it is calories in, calories out. It means tracking your weight, weighing yourself, cutting back, getting into a habit, getting into a routine. Don't go too far with it. Don't try and fast. That's not going to work. I know you're going to do that. You're going to go and do a fast anyway, but I'm trying to stop you from doing that. But the thing that works is over time, long-term behavior, changing your habit, cutting down. It will be difficult, challenging. It won't feel your best all the time. That's just the way it is. And you will get that result. And you will, you can do it. You absolutely can do it. And it's definitely worthwhile doing it. Definitely worthwhile losing weight. If I, if you think I could help you in any way, you can subscribe to the channel. I've got maybe other videos on this. You can reach out to me if you like. Or you can come to the Fruit Festival. This is a very long time into a video to, to do a plug for the festival. But 26th of July to the 2nd of August, UK Fruit Fest. Feel free to come along. Fruitfest.co.uk Anyway, thank you very much for watching.